All right, it's midday, so we will get started um, so that we can get through our bite-sized webinar. So welcome, everybody. It's Megan, the brand manager, and with me is Matt Carey, our senior engineer. Hello. And the purpose of today's webinar is to answer a question that we get asked a lot, which is, how many simultaneous calls does my client actually need? Because um, people are so used to sizing and uh, PBX by the extension or by the handset and that type of scenario. And of course, 3CX works quite differently to that. Um, so we'll run through the webinar and then at the end, we'll have time for any questions that you may have. Um, and you know, feel free to reach out to us as always. So I'll hand over to Matt and we'll get going through the presentation. Awesome, thanks for that, Megan. Hello, everyone. So today's session uh, is probably gonna be one of our shorter ones. Uh, so we're gonna be having a quick look at what a simultaneous call is with 3CX. As Megan noted, a lot of the older systems, they were, you know, we had the ISDN, BRI with various numbers and sometimes things are licensed by extensions. It's all very complicated. So 3CX we feel has a superior licensing model and that is by the simultaneous call. And what is a simultaneous call? It is simply any established call between point A and point B. And I find the easiest way to visualize this is if you remember the um, the cup string phones that you had as a child where you had the two cups with a, a string tightened between them to carry the sound. If you imagine that with something like a phone system, the amount of string that you need is basically your simultaneous calls. So that can be a call between two internal extensions. So we've just got some examples here. So that'd be one simultaneous call. If we had a call between an internal extension and an external corner, that is one simultaneous call. If we had one active call and we've got four callers waiting in a call queue or something like that, that's consuming five because we've got the one active and four waiting. And the same for basically any call in and out, and also notably the same for hotel wake up calls as well. So that does utilize a simultaneous call for those. So there's a few ways to size. I always say at the training, it's probably the simplest way to size is to go on a site walk around. Uh, go to an end user site during a busy period and just have a nose around and really see how many people are on the phone at any one given time is probably the easiest way. A lot of end users will generally have a vague idea and a site walk around is always handy as well because it allows you to get a little bit of scope of the network as well and see how things are placed out. A slightly harder way to work it out is to review a customer's existing bill. This Obviously, it takes a little longer to do analysis, but this does have the added benefit if you have an idea of what the incumbent provider's costs are. You can quickly um, evaluate how much cheaper, affordable, and the return on investment of having a VoIP system in place is. And probably another method here is becoming more and more common, interestingly enough, is rather than uh, just talking the talk, is to actually spin up a free trial from your reseller portal and get a customer using a live test system, because the trial, of course, is free. They get an idea of what the system is like. They can run it in parallel to their existing system as well. And that does get tied to you as a lead as well, which is really cool. And then you get to utilize the 3 6 usage report, which will actually tell you how many simultaneous calls they've used. So that's catering for the existing call capacity. And of course, now what we've got to mention is planning for a little bit extra and overflow. And this may come in the form of a customer requiring conferencing, because of course, once we've set up a conference, any call that's coming into the system, say we have 10 people joining, that would be 10 simultaneous calls used. So we'd have to plan for that. Companies inevitably grow as well, so planning for extra staff coming on board as well is important. The website click to talk capability with 3CX because that chat can be escalated to a, a call via a web browser, that does take a simultaneous call as well. Obviously calls waiting in a call queue takes up a simultaneous call. Uh, if you're utilizing bridging as well, and of course seasonal telemarketing as well, and we've 
and Megan will probably attest this, of course, with the um, current situation with medical institutions around the world, they're seeing increased calling requirements as well. So very important to plan ahead for these. Absolutely, and just the other thing that I jump in there is Matt mentioned the conference call and how many simultaneous calls that takes up. That's also another reason to use the web meeting, which is WebRTC based, so it doesn't suck up your simultaneous call count. Um, we've actually had a number of customers through the COVID-19 lockdown, um, both medical and just normal business organisations, that didn't realise web meeting actually existed in 3CX and they yeah. have been blown away by the capacity and how clear it is. So um, it is a important feature to mention and that also helps companies to keep their simultaneous call count down. So um, well worth considering that when sizing as well, you know, how can they utilise web meeting for audio or video conferencing? So um, good, good point there. Oh, this is me. Um, yeah. So <laughs> what simultaneous call license sizes are there? There is a lot more license options with the annual subscription. So um, as you can see, all the way from 4,024, it actually goes beyond that, but um, it's unusual to see a simultaneous call count that large in New Zealand. Um, as you can see, compared with the old traditional perpetual licenses, which has far fewer options, the annual license is definitely the preferred option for licensing and more increments to be able to do slow updates and upgrades as well. Um, so just covering on the perpetual side of things, the first level of licensing you can actually order for perpetual now is 16 simultaneous calls. Um, anything below that you have to go with the annual subscription and this is part of 3CX's um, push towards the annual subscription. The nice thing with that annual subscription is the flexibility. So for example, if you start your customer with 16 simultaneous calls and they were a medical center and then suddenly COVID-19 came along, you could actually do just an incremental upgrade to 24 or, and then again up to 32 if you needed to. And that's prorated to the end of their term. So their um, 365 day date stays the same every year. Um, apart from leap year where obviously it moves slightly. Um, but it also means that at the end of that busy period, if they actually want to go back to their original, say 16 simultaneous calls, there is a way to do that. It's a little bit messy. You have to let the license drop to the free standard and then upgrade it again. But it does give you that flexibility. With Perpetual, there is no flexibility. You can upgrade, but you can never downgrade. So for example, if somebody had a Perpetual license during the recent crisis, um, their first option, if they had an older one of four or eight, would be to go to 16 and then up to 32. But once they've gone up, they can't go down. So their renewal the following year will be at that higher rate. Again, they are prorated for the first part, um, but then it becomes an annual maintenance. And so I really do urge you to consider what is in the customer's best interest when looking at the licensing, because there are still customers out there that really want a perpetual license. Um, but with 3CX, it is designed and moving more towards the annual licensing subscription and that flexibility. So I think that's probably a very key point to sell to your customers. Absolutely. So what if you get the simultaneous call count wrong? Um, so I've just sort of covered that briefly. Um, so with the annual license, you've got that flexibility. With the perpetual license, you don't have that flexibility and they're tied into those costs. Um, obviously, exchange rate fluctuations come in there as well. So, um, you know, as I said, key thing is the annual license is the flexible license. Annual license is the way forward for 3CX. Um, you know, they're really trying to discourage um, the perpetual license sale. Um, and I think we'll see more of that in the future from 3CX. I think that's about it. So just to, I guess, recap what Matt's been through and what I've discussed there with the simultaneous call, the key to sizing the licence correctly for your customer initially is don't oversize, try and get it right, look at the existing, do that site walkthrough, 
um, because um, Matt, you'd be able to give an example. You've done a couple um, towards the end of 2019 and beginning of 2020 where mm -hmm. customers thought they had the simultaneous call count right. Matt went and did a site walkthrough with them and they instantly counted that more people were on the phone than what they were charging yeah. the license for. So, um, you know, it's very simple to see who's talking on a headset or has a handset to their ear. Um, and, you know, we had a case where they were going to sell an eight simultaneous call. Um, Matt walked in and counted 14 people on call. So, you know, 16 was really the minimum for that customer. So just thinking about those things, there's no, you know, hard and fast formula. It is using the knowledge that is available and remembering to ask those key questions about seasonal type things. So um, we had a hotel um, a couple of years ago now um, that had never exceeded their capacity um, until they suddenly were having a quiet patch and decided to do some outbound telemarketing and they um, blew their call count straight away because they were constantly calling out so they needed to do an upgrade which of course is a simple and quick process to do um, but it is thinking about that um, throughout it and talking about that flexibility so I guess those are really the key things. Um, Matt's also just followed this up with a blog which went live yesterday morning and I'll be sharing that out via LinkedIn as well, which again just emphasises these same key points. Um, so it's, I guess the easiest way to work out you know, how many simultaneous calls does my client need and to be able to explain to a customer what that simultaneous call is. So, um, if anybody's got any questions, we're more than happy to answer those and give some examples. You've got a very good point made. Um, another way to size, of course, is they're on a very old um, POTS system and they've only got three lines in. That's probably the capacity that they would be using currently, but of course you would want to plan for future growth in there. And often the reason that people are going from that older system to a IP PBX is because it is no longer fit for purpose and they have further requirements. But a lot of businesses in New Zealand are in that four and eight simultaneous call license level because they are just small businesses. Um, so um, absolutely. We've got any other questions there, Matt? No, I think we're good. Excellent. All right. Well, if anybody does think of any questions, you can always get us um, directly on our email addresses, Matt or Megan at softsoul.co.nz or to the voice at softsoul.co.nz. If you need any help with working through a customer needing to upgrade or needing to downgrade even, um, do feel free to reach out to us and we can look up the license and see the best way forward for your customer. Um, we know that it's challenging times out there at the moment with um, all businesses, but particularly the small businesses that have been so greatly impacted by COVID-19. Um, and um, we're certainly here to look and see how we can help you as their 3CX partner to find the best option available for your customer. So thank you all for joining us today um, for our little bite-sized webinar. We will put this up onto YouTube. Um, and we will hopefully catch some of you on our Grand Stream webinar on Thursday and we'll be back next month with another couple of bite-sized webinars as well. So thanks everyone. Awesome. Thanks everyone. Take it easy.